Hello, it's Packet Tuesday again. It's Johannes here and today yet more exciting packet. Remember a couple episodes ago, we talked about how ICMP errors can cause problems with IP options. We sort of talked about the vulnerability in the FreeBSD uh, ping utility. And well, I thought, uh, Let's look a little bit more at ICMP. It was also one of the suggested things in one of the YouTube comments. And uh, what I'll be doing today is I just pulled about 12 gigabytes of traffic from my uh, network sensor here at home. Why 12 gigabytes? Because, well, uh, that's when the sensor sort of happens uh, to, ro to rotate PCAP files. So it's just a random PCAP file I pulled here. And uh, this uh, PCAP file, well, I figure we'll just look for the largest ICMP packet we can find. I hope we won't find a covert channel, I have to tell you, because uh, I don't like to sort of, uh, well, not as a life, but close to life to uh, find that I'm compromised. Uh, what I sort of from past experience expect is that we'll see an ICMP error message. Uh, why is this exciting? Why is this something that we want to look for? Uh, well, first of all, error messages can be used as covert channels too. Actually, in some ways, almost more useful sometimes uh, than your ICMP echo request. Echo requests and response messages, they are sometimes blocked at firewalls. Also, a high volume of them uh, can uh, trip some sensors. You always have some ICMP error messages now, ICMP error messages have, according to the RFC, a fairly defined uh, format. And uh, actually, let, let's switch to the RFC here. Uh, let's uh, take a look and uh, pull up uh, the RFC. And um, this would probably be, I think, 792 is the uh, RFC 792. Yeah, uh, ICMP. Okay, here is the message, and let's look at some of the, yeah. Uh, so uh, this would be your standard destination unreachable message. Destination unreachable, uh, the type is always three, and uh, then we have different codes here, you know, depending on uh, what is unreachable. Then we have our checksum, and that's sort of, you know, sort of the the main parts of the ICMP header. The next four part bytes of the ICMP header are unused for error messages, and at least for the unreachable error messages. And then we do have the first few bytes of the packet that caused the problem. And that's the IP header, plus as it says in the RFC, 64 bits or eight bytes of the IP payload. A little bit funny wording here with the data datagram, uh, but uh, anyway, um, why eight bytes? Well, eight bytes sort of makes a lot of sense because that gives you like in TCP your ports and ICMP, it gives you basically the ICMP uh, header. If it's not an ICMP error, of course, you wouldn't see an error in response to an error. For uh, UDP, it also gives you the entire UDP header. So that makes quite a bit of sense. Uh, but it turns out that uh, some operating systems choose uh, to add more to it. And there are a couple complications uh, to this. So the reason we need the original datagram, or at least the first few bytes uh, in these ICMP error messages, is that uh, we need to make sure that uh, this error message is actually legit. It's not spoofed. And the uh, Regardless whether it's spoofed or not, we also need to know, you know, which application we need to send it to. We need to know, like, you know, which port was unreachable and such. And that's, of course, you know, in our UDP header. So that's why we need those ports to be included. And that's also sort of where these eight bytes come from. Complications to this are that, you know, part of the IP header is, for example, uh, IP addresses. Well, if you're dealing with NAT, um, IP addresses change. So NAT gateways also need to undo any changes then to the uh, to the ICMP payload, not just to the proper IP header, uh, including all the checksums and such, which uh, 
makes NAT more expensive, more complicated um, than you would sort of naively believe in. Uh, can also cause the issues if that's not done uh, correctly. But anyway, so this is what we're looking for here. We're looking for ICMP messages and uh, according to the RFC, so we have 20 bytes of, um, let's do a little calculation what our uh, packet uh, size uh, should be here. So we got um, 20 bytes of IP header here. So that's the IP, then we got eight bytes of ICMP header. Then we got another 20 bytes of this IP header. And then we got the eight bytes that are included from the original uh, datagram. So that gives us 56 bytes total. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start by looking for packets that are larger than 56 bytes. Let's uh, switch uh, to the packet capture here. look at it so 12 gigabytes is what we have here about you know for uh, this packet capture and uh, now to search for our packets you want to look for ICMP and then we want to get anything that has a total length of larger than uh, 56 now uh, let's just so total length here that's offset two and three into the IP header. Uh, okay. So, this is how we are writing this. And we start at offset two and we want to look at two bytes. So that gets us uh, offset two and three. And we want this to be larger than 56. And because I'm pretty sure that we get more than one packet here, let me just cut it off at 10 packets and see what we get. Okay, well, we got a few here. Uh, we got our normal ICMP echo replies and requests, normal meaning uh, length of 64. So uh, now the length here, remember, that's the length of the IP payload. So we have to add 20 bytes for the complete datagram uh, size, so 84. Uh, let's just make it greater than 100. Let's make it, okay. Looks like we got some with 144. So um, let's just see if we have anything larger than 200. Yeah, we got uh, 470 here. So let's see if we got anything. Oh, actually here we got one uh, 543. Uh, so that's 563. Let's see if we got anything greater than 563. We should get close now. So. Uh, Let's see what we got here. We got some 556 five, here. I see several 556. Five, so let's see, do we have anything greater than 76? Well, looks like that was it, uh, but let's let it finish uh, to make sure. Uh, yep, uh, so. 576, that should be our maximum size. Yep, and we have a couple packs here, but let's just look at uh, the first one here uh, that we got. Uh, so here we got an unreachable coming back from uh, 17 dot something. Uh, 17 slash eight, that IP address range is owned by Apple. So whenever you see any IP address starting with 17, uh, you know uh, this came from Apple, so we, we're not really expecting any sort of attack, anything uh, malicious here necessarily, uh, but more or less uh, normal uh, traffic, maybe with some little Apple twists uh, to it. Okay, uh, let me just save this into a PCAP before I, and this will be the PCAP also that I'll uh, add here uh, to uh, the video. Uh, 
Okay, now uh, let's read that back. And I'm just uh, only showing the first couple lines here uh, because now it's a larger packet. And if I, with dash X here, I'm dumping the payload, as uh, the, the hexadecimal uh, data from the packet, uh, it would just scroll the headers off the screen. So this should give me a nicer uh, display and let me just start it here at the top okay good yeah, so uh, this is our packet well uh, we got a packet so let's uh, dissect the packet let me bring uh, my diagram back in here let me just uh, fold this over so we've got a little bit more space and let's start with the ip header here of course four or five we have version four, IP header length five, so 20 bytes IP header, type of service, Charlie Zero. I'm not sure if I talked about this yet. Uh, uh, quite often you see Zero as a type of service, that's your default. Uh, Charlie Zero, that means it's sort of an inner networking, some control packets that should be uh, prioritized. Uh, and uh, let's actually see if we can uh, find uh, that RFC here quickly. That shows that. Uh, that was uh, like one of the real early ones. Also, I think 795. And uh, let me just clean this up here a little bit. So basically, uh, Charlie Zero, you know, what does that uh, mean here? Charlie Zero, if I have my type of service byte. So the last four are zero. Then I have zero, zero, one, one. And so one, two, four, eight. Eight and four is set, which is 12, and that gets us uh, the Charlie C. Mm -hmm. Uh, so basically we're looking for what does it mean that the first two bits are set. Well, the first three bits here are uh, precedence. So it's our first uh, three bits. Let's see if you have anything more here for exactly uh, the first uh, two bits. And here it is. So in the network control, that's if only the first two bits are set. Uh, so it basically comes from another network. That's really sort of what this means. Uh, yes, this is an old RFC. I think this one is actually labeled historic. Yeah, uh, this one is historic. Yeah? So uh, one of the original uh, Postel uh, RFCs here. Uh, this byte got sort of repurposed then as uh, differentiated services control points. And that's 2474. Uh, and... Uh, Let's see if we can find it, but it tries to be backwards compatible. And uh, we should see this somewhere down here. Yeah, so here we basically have our different service code points. So these are the zero and one bit is what we're talking about here. Lots of references to the old RFCs because it does try to be uh, backwards uh, compatible. Uh, I'm looking for the, actually, I should be able to search for it, no? Yeah, here. Uh, so presence values 110 and 1111 for routing traffic. Uh, and uh, anything that has the first two bits set you know, must give packets, or must be treated preferentially. So, uh, Still, you know, these packets are uh, routed faster, uh, higher priority than uh, your uh, normal packet. So anyway, it's a little segue here uh, into uh, the uh, type of service byte. Charlie zero, then we have our total length, zero, two, four, zero. That's of course what we filtered for. Then we have our IP ID. Bravo 4, 0, Bravo. 
then we have our uh, flags and offset for zero, zero, zero. Four means, of course, the do not fragment flag is set. And there's your one for the offset, two more fragment, and then uh, the do not fragment is four, and the evil bit eight. Okay, and then we have our time to live to Foxtrot. So to F, that's 32 plus 15 or 47. Uh, let's assume we started at 64. We don't know, of course, what Apple starts at, but uh, that would make uh, the most sense. And we do get, what is it, sort of 17 uh, uh, hops or something like this, which is well, okay. It's uh, definitely within a normal range as far as uh, number of hops go. Okay. Then we got our uh, protocol. That's of course one or ICMP. And we got our checksum one four F one four Fox start echo. And we got our source IP it starts here with 11. So that's 17. And then our destination 10, 5, 1, 1, 3, 9. Okay. That's our IP header. Then next we do have our ICMP header, type and code 33, that's a port unreachable, our checksum, and our four unused bytes, all zero. And it must be zero, those, those four bytes. And the next, well, it's four, five again. It's our good friend telling us that we do have another IPv4 packet. Uh, okay, so another IPv4 packet to decode that now tells us what actually caused the problem. Okay, let's actually go back uh, to red here. So, 4.5. Our type of service is now 0. Our length is 4 Charlie Charlie. And this is uh, less than the length of this packet, so we are not including the entire packet here. Uh, only the first, you know, again, few bytes are being included here. Then we have our IP ID 0. And our fragment flag, do not fragment again, and no offset. Of course, do not fragment you know, often goes with the IP ID 0. Actually, if you have an IP ID 0, you need to have, you must have a uh, do not fragment flag set uh, because then we don't have an IP ID to really you know, uh, do fragments with. Uh, our time to live here is uh, 2 alpha. Now, this also started you know, likely at 64 at 4 zero. This is the time to live at the time it arrived at this destination that then sent us uh, the error message back. Note it's a little bit different from the time to live that we got here from this host. If they both started at the same value, 64, and typically the path to a host is similar to the path coming back from the host, so they should be similar, kind of. Now, to A, to F, I call it close enough here. Now we have UDP here, 1-1 one, one or 17. Then our checksum. And then our source IP, which of course is the destination IP of our ICMP packet here. And our destination IP, our original destination IP, was the IP address from which we got the error back. So that makes perfect sense. And uh, let me just clean up things a little bit. So we are now up to here. So this is... IP header, ICMP header, then we have the IP header of the packet that caused the error and the UDP header of the packet that caused the error is coming next. So here we have our source port, some high port, our destination port, that was port 443. So that's port's unreachable. We tried to send a packet to port 443, but it was unreachable. Then we do have our UDP length, it's 
course, 20 bytes less than what we had here for the IP length. Our UDP checksum, which we can't validate here because we don't have the full uh, UDP payload here. Okay, and then we have our payload. So what we got here was UDP port 443. If it would be TCP 443, we first of all should not get a port unreachable packet. I've sometimes seen firewalls sending back port unreachable to TCP, but usually you should not get a port unreachable packet uh, for uh, TCP. Port 443 is usually, well, HTTPS, you know, port uh, 443 TCP, but here we have 443 UDP, which means that this is quick. Now, quick is the newer protocol that um, sometimes also referred to as HTTP3, uh, but uh, what it really does quick, it's sort of an intermediate layer. Uh, so if we have our full stack here, we have our ethernet header, we have our IP header, we have our UDP header, and then we have our quick header. Ah, sorry. And let me print this, let me try this a little bit nicer here. So it's ethernet, it's IP, it's UDP, it's quick, and then we have actually HTTP sort of over quick, or HTTP 2 over quick. That's really what uh, HTTP 3 is really about then. Yeah? So this is then usually um, referred to as HTTP 3, and there's a special RFC about it. The UDP header is really just used sort of as a little trick to sort of sneak that uh, packet across um, other, uh, across networks. This quick header really sort of uh, takes now the role of our transport header. It's in some way sort of TCP light kind of. It's, it's a faster, nimble, more customizable way of TCP. That's kind of what uh, quick really does. They could have theoretically just, you know, uh, define a new protocol here instead of uh, TCP UDP, but that caused a lot of problems with firewalls and such, so they figured, hey, let's just uh, keep sort of UDP as the vehicle for these packets. Uh, that makes things a little bit more backwards compatible. So anyway, uh, like I said, we have a quick here, and our quick payload starts with uh, Charlie 3. Uh, quick is not a simple protocol, as you can imagine. It's a fairly nasty, I have to say, set of RFCs, actually more than one RFC that defines it. Uh, let's take a quick look here and maybe we can see what that uh, C3 is about. It should be the first packet. So it should be some kind of initialization uh, packet. Uh, the RFC should be 9,000, yeah, 9,000, uh, not, I just keep forgetting if it's 9,000, 9,300, but, um, yeah, uh, so that's quick here, and uh, let's see. If we can find here our. Because the word initial shows up too often here. Looking at the packet diagrams here are a little bit weird anyway.
Well, I um, don't want to spend too much time on finding this yet here. I just want to give you sort of a quick idea for quick uh, what is about. Uh, so C3 here, uh, the C again means the first two bits are set, which it just means it's using a large header type and uh, also one uh, fixed bit here. And uh, next we have sort of a version. We have four bytes for a version. It's version one. And you get um, one of these stream identifiers now with eight bytes for the first one and then zero bytes here. There's nothing yet from the other end. Uh, so we have a zero and then uh, some additional payloads. It starts to get encrypted now. Uh, TCP dump can help you a little bit with this. If uh, you turn on verbose. So first of all, we do have our IP header here because it's an ICMP error. Uh, TCP dump will also show us the IP that's embedded here. And notice how TCP dump actually does decode some quick. So we get that connection ID here. Where do we have uh, the B8, B3, sorry, B3, 2F. Uh, so we get that connection ID here. It also displays that. And that's about as much as you're going to see in a packet. The other thing uh, I just want to show you here is one little trick that comes up uh, with uh, Wireshark and uh, with T-Shark when you're dealing uh, with ICMP errors. So um, let's more, let me write a T-Shark filter here. capital Y UDP. Notice how this filter for UDP matches this ICMP packet. Uh, Wireshark and T-Shark will filter not just on the actual IP header of a packet, but also on any embedded IP headers that show up as the payload of ICMP error messages. So this can be actually nice if you sort of try to uh, find a related error messages to a particular connection. Uh, this also shows up if I'm trying to extract fields. So we do the dash T fields and then lets me extract the source IP address here. You see how I get two fields here. protocol oh, I forgot <laughs> now uh, but um, it basically includes the IP address of the IP header as well as the IP address the source IP address in the ICMP payload so sometimes confuses people if they see uh, both of these uh, IP addresses here uh, in their packet so anyway, uh, that's what I have here uh, for uh, ICMP error messages. Like I said, quick, uh, maybe I'll manage to uh, get a couple sessions about that protocol together. It's certainly one of those things uh, that uh, is becoming a little bit uh, more important uh, these days. Hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, video and you know, again, if, if it was a little bit fast for you to walk through, I'm trying to limit the length of these videos a little bit uh, to not tire you out too much. But you can always, you know, I, I don't mind if you pause me and uh, download the PCAP uh, from the packettuesday.com website. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. So uh, subscribe, like, click the bell. You kind of watch enough YouTube videos where you, where you know this. Uh, I do them because people watch them. So let your friends know, let your enemy know. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and talk to you next Tuesday. Bye.